So as as I am here speaking ill of um, Roger Mark being Mystic Hands, it's it was their foul. They're foul and I'm their harm, so even amongst their own um, you know, honor code violations and what type what colleague would they have that would permit uh, themselves abducted um, and effectively, you know, power of attorney appointed to people who have always wanted to undermine you and um, yeah. Now, uh, so I can talk about them as I wish, as I wish under the circumstances. What I'll tell you a little bit about religious people is that remember that at some point they must make a decision. Person X has caved to consent to be studied. In fact, from their point of view, and this is psychopathic as, uh, and they're, they're not even being critical about being in this situation, this paradoxical situation where they go. Um, our religious, theological, uh, propositional knowledge and values are concealed from public disclosure, yet we feel as social scientists and gentlemen that we can technologically sense with citizens reaching out to us for help. Now, bear in mind that they've buried and repressed the Markian narrative which is them so you've got them then assuming that role like uh oh do you think you're the king of um you know swing a hill or Mor Mawson or uh Colwell are you the king of you know the Kambar village uh, they've got they've got that circumspect it's second nature to them to be circumspect, invasive in surveying, connotative to a, a charge they wish to issue. So the manner in which they gather and collect evidence is going to be r ridiculous too. I, I mean, absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous to the point of your familiarity with London bridges falling down, uh, uh, constituting a case against you that you perhaps by pyrotechnic means or use of explosives uh, bear the intent to travel to Buckingham to um, use explosives to destroy London Bridge uh, and that therefore you're to be restrained and you're to have antipsychotics rammed into your system for the rest of your life for the safety of London London Bridge uh, it's it's the claim that it's it's made possible by belief in God. If argued in one tone or another, uh, that's the that's the opposite phonetically of worship songs. If you think of in wor worship songs, are all uh, gestural to a God concept which doesn't exist, but is constituted of a bunch of emotional responses and. Um, you know, uh, a, a religious Christian can be convinced that no matter how how harsh the fate they endure and how harsh the conditions of mistreatment they go through, it's it's uh, what God had intended for them. It it suits them. Uh, it's appropriate to them. And at what point are they to step up and rebel and go just just because just because I I can remember the song London Bridge. I mean, no, nor, do, nor am I pr providing a water spout for Incy Wincy Spider to climb up. You've got, you know, um, investigating my apartment as you do, you're not going to find uh, my shoes buckled. You're not going to find, you're going to find much evidence of this intent. To, to, But what they want to say is the intent is there. It's just, uh, they're, they're very retarded with these arguments. I hate the talk, like, is you suffer from chronic physically disabling pain. Do you think it's in your brain or do you think it's mental? Now, if a, if a healthcare professional asks you that question, given all the receptors are in your brain, um, it's a bit like um, asking a spade if it's a spade, really. So it's, uh, it's 
it's self-evidently it's entailing of violating the Religious Discrimination Act because it's to say uh, there's a part of your somehow your body is not physical and yet here's an ensemble and range of physical chemical substances uh, can we complicate the case pertinent to you with you know uh, cap the capital city of Australia where the legislation paper is five times thicker and the, than it is in the mental health act of any other state uh, territory in the uh, on the continent um, that's where the, that's where you're be, being sort of secretly asked on the sly you know are you are you just conflicted by an in, introspective related um, philosophic or existential problems that you're un, you, you can think through but you're struggling and so your pain is therefore mental you go no the Pain is in the fucking head. Um, I don't. Um, I don't require interventionary prayer. Enough people know my my uh, IP address. So uh, yeah, no interventionary prayer here, please. Uh, now the word will. So the Masonic studies know this about those of you theists. You're thinking of death and beyond it, connotative to a traveler's journey. Um, people who are, I think of something like if I could contribute a book to society, then that book would outlive me. But it, it would come from me, but outlive me, and and perhaps be of use to people after I'm gone. <clears throat> and that sense in which a person's existence is transcendental of their physical death because they're still actively contributing to society. Like with watching Bowie's clips still. I, uh, I, don't, like, I don't like the feeling at all of that he's, that he's gone. No. Uh, so Manson puts it beautifully in you know, the recent tribute to Gene Wilder. May he, may he live on in his works. Uh, and that's an aspiration worth working towards that others would think that of you rather than thinking, well, I am this traveler and uh, I, I, I say you've divisively taken the word will and wedged it in ways that create opportunity for your exploit um, in terms of what operations may be, may go about um, connotative to what, I, what eyes are above you, what eyes are below you, what business affiliations subsist between the two and uh, that you have, if you've written in your uh, a will, and then also declared on a su at every Sunday, you know, uh, Lord, not my will be done, but yours. Then, you know, these what these Masons take to is is they want to take on. Imagine, read the Book of Job, you'll get an idea of Freemasons. The narrative and the way that uh, tenor in which Lucifer accosts God and, and, and challenges God saying, you know, Job is not your best worshipper. He's just got good circumstances. He's got ten kids. He's got the farm. He's been fruitful. He's, uh, prof he's prospering. You know, his, his worship is... Um, just uh, empty placations. Is there's no there's no truth about Job loving you, God, and and Lucifer would hustles. It's just you know like the courtroom devil advocate. Lucifer just hustles and hustles, and in the book of Job, God gives in and goes, well, I'll test him and kills all ten of his children, and you know God proves a retard in that book if you. 
So, those of you willers, paperback willers, um, you know, you're, you're, you've, you've taken it away from you that, um, that what constitutes your will is something that you're marshalling uh, on all religious grounds. Your every religious ground and your submission to a deity means that your will is, uh, you say of your own will, well, I relegate its, ha its, its handling over to you. Oh, oh Lord, or and I, oh, and don't I hope that the devil won't besiege it and uh, misappropriate my will? And doesn't the Book of Job tell all Christians that that's that's just as likely to happen, um, corresponding to the better religionists they become, because there there really was no better example of a worshipper of God in the Bible than Job, and yet he he winds up being the most mistreated by God, and you also see God being by by means of verbal negation the bit the absolute bitch, the bitch of the devil, uh, Lucifer wins. You, uh, if you want to say charge and indict Lucifer with horrible use of language, you can go yeah, but compare that to compare that to God murdering f f ten of Job's children. Oh, but in a biblical fairy tale ending. Once he once he has destroyed all of Job's equity, and Job's on his knees screaming, saying, uh, "Why have you done this, Lord?" And, and and then God replies to him with a question, uh, "Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth?" To which Job could have said, "Um." Uh, in fact, I'm told you laid a lot more than the foundations of the earth. You uh. You had a man's rib cage lay a woman so that he could lay the woman on the foundations of the earth, and then you had everyone inbreed thereon. Uh, you even you even made sure that they marched the animals in mating pairs so that every single species of animal could be inbred, inbred, inbred. So, um, you know. It would, it would be a nice break from all this incestuous uh, self-extinction of species for, for you to indeed lay the foundations of the earth once again, right here, right now. Maybe you'll settle the fuck down, not murder ten children. Uh, and then in a fairy tale ending, Job, Job receives the blessing of a fresh batch of another ten children and his cozy home from the biblical God. The key here that I want you to think about is why does a being who knows everything, has all power, is ever present, uh, has timeless, infinite knowledge, the power to do anything and the knowledge of everything, is not bound by space or time, uh, and is omnipresent, why is he going to not just have Lucifer enter and then say something to him like, You've entered this room in an attempt to hustle me and to endanger one of my worshippers. I can already read your mind, piss off, and go and subscribe to uh, eBay or something. Uh, and there's no answer as to why God couldn't do that, except that you are to be the benefactor, the, the beneficiary of reading the proceedings that occur in the book of Job and somehow better contending with the nature of God as a result of having read them, when all the book really does is confuse God's nature, as it is defined to you as, uh, we use the name online, Om Omnimax, Omnimax for uh, ever-present, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving, um, you know, superhuman properties to the infinite degree. Uh, as his attributes. On a psychological level, Bishop Spong argues that man created God because he wanted God endowed with the properties that are transcendental of the, the exact same character attributes that constitute limitations in the daily life of man. Uh, so yeah, read Job and say,
Sure. Imagine the stank of Masonic inquiry as they run a check into you and your land and what you're chatting about. Uh, what, you, what, what Doppler effects you've got on the matter of will. Well, you've written a will and then you've gone to a church and said, not my will be done but yours. You're sitting in front of a pokies machine just hitting play over and over again. Uh, will it be, will he, will, will final judgment, and so you can't, be, to believe in final judgment is to question, is to approach with a, a, a hectic question mark, the death, the prospect of death, that's why I've predicted that the, the last book, once, 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 um, evilbible.com's content is, is espoused, and it, the church is, made to own up to how indecent towards women the content of the Bible is. And once, once all these issues are brought to public and publicly discussed more and recognized to be inhibiting societal progress, there'll be one final thought of, of, of hiding for the, for, the, for the Bible thumpers, and that's going to be the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, because what they're trying to argue now and what's failing is that they're trying to say, well, you need Jesus Christ in your life as the Lord and Savior or else everything will be meaningless. Life is meaningless. Uh, Nietzsche sort of echoes in Beyond Good and Evil, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, The Antichrist, uh, Twilight of the Idols, The Genealogy of Morals, um, okay, S.E. Homo, uh, the gay science, written but written bef but when gay meant happy, <laughs> and he echoes a lot of the statements that you'll find prevalent throughout the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, every everything is meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly, 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 utterly meaningless, says the teacher. There is nothing new under the sun. Everything is everything that has happened has happened before. There, there will be nothing new under the sun, and everything is meaningless. So this, this sort of nihilism is actually a, it's a domain of thought where the ex-Christian goes. They, they, go, they go fuck it. They want to read of, about nihilism. They want to read Nietzsche. They want to read about anarchy. They want to read about all this rebelliousness. Uh, the Bible thumpers will actually be able to come forward and say, well, look, we've actually had this book here Ecclesiastes all along and it actually indulges in these topics so that you'll you'd then be able to counter and go well yeah uh, this implies then by by necessity that you you embellished this entire doctrine of uh, this innocent man you killed being some sort of uh, dispatched savior on a premeditative quest to um, indemnify the immortality of pe of people through the manner of by, of his killing, um, uh, it, it will be it's 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 ecclesiastical to to, to say well, what what if his ideas are meaningless? Um, you know what if um, what if every every miracle attributed to this man can be found attributed to pagan gods uh, who lived and dwelled centuries to millennia before the birth of your Jesus Christ. Uh, what if there's nothing new under the sun indeed? So will it be a linchpin? Will it be the, will it be the Bible lover's last and final attempt to claim that they've got literary grounds to converge at a point of mutual understanding with the secular world. Because uh, nothingness is, is quite calm. If you can know at the same time that the end of, at the end of life, you know, you'll be looking at, at a void of nothingness. But also, at the same time, you're an, just an idea to everyone you'll ever meet. 
Yeah, and understanding and mastering both of these concepts at the same time uh, extend your duality and edify it and friendship for, with the people with whom you cross paths. That you'll find to this day the mass media are indicting it as the uh, the ideas and beliefs and values of the dangerous person, the criminal. Uh, you even watch the cameraman cut them off when the the man in Sydney who shot three people, the uh, three women that his Bible told him would have all had to suck his cock any time he wanted. Uh, but they didn't, so, you know, he got his gun and he followed his God-given right to shoot and kill but not murder them, for he was only doing that which he believed was going to be pleasing to the biblical Lord. Uh, sadly, you still have that stated in the Bible. Uh, you've got cops trying to bail people up on arrests, asking the question, um, did you did you fart or queef by, by your own free will, um, your God-given free will? So we're, we're uh, like toy soldiers, like Martika once sang about, if, if this... All powerful and all knowing God uh, wound up our decisions, uh, wound up our every move, wound up our every predisposition, our every exercise of choice. We may have felt passive, passively like the authors of our own actions, but uh, if this God exists with these power attributes, we're either to argue that He doesn't exist or where to, where to fathom that every single thing that's ever gone wrong in the earth has done so by his design, and that indeed any, any criminal that's endangered the life of another was selected to do so by the God of the Christian Bible, who I, I echo his words once again in the book of Isaiah. Uh, I, I create evil and I cause woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. So... You know, I don't really swing on the pendulum of um, free will versus determinism either, because each each side of that debate uh, is uh, absconding of the concept of personal willpower. So personal willpower, and you see shred of it when when Job uh, verbally challenges challenges God. You see a shred of it in that book there. There should you should have more of it. My suggestion is that it was that that effort on Job's behalf that won him his family back. Um, but you're you're setting up a bunch of logical contradictions in your head if you're going well. Though I act freely, all my moves were chosen by God. Uh, it, it creates the potential in the brain to excuse negative and hostile outbursts of mood um, as simply another uh, another chapter of, of the will of God taking form um, and God remains the excuse the ultimate excuse it's, 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 it's all over the press it's this obedience to the will of this God who says has said all these things that you can read at www.evilbible.com uh, it's these people that think that they're following these these teachings that are going to, to do more harm um, to the, man, the the person with the mind that thinks nothing matters and can sense, can sense that nothing matters that it's all in their head um, this, this person is transcendental of hostile motive it does. It doesn't. These they don't matter either. Is, that's what you have to understand. And God, God believers don't get it. It's like your God's existence doesn't matter. Yes, it's somewhat common sense. Like when we were toddlers running around, you know, hugging uh, our relatives at, in in our nappies at eighteen months old, able to sense and empathize with our elders. Um, it's common sense to to uh, be altruistic and not violate the rights to life, health, movement and expression. And the belief in nothing is sufficient. 
uh, as as is um, recognizing, you know, that nothing matters, that that you yourself might only exist as concepts or ideas to other people, no matter how close you get. You might be strangers when you meet, every time you meet, and no matter how close you get or who you fall in love with or, or any and all of that. Uh, but it does it does frustrate me that the mainstream media, I, what I think they're out to do is go, well, there's a supply-demand province here where... And, 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 you know, the psychiatrist who's assessed the crime comes in and goes, well, given how this person acted, they clearly weren't behaving in a very godly way. And it was, it's a bit like how um, the pious and rich in France... In, during the Renaissance, would would have used the term godly, because uh, they, they they also used the term godless to to slander um, a less wealthy family, and and say you know we don't like you, we don't like how you talk, or we don't like how you look, so you're a godless piece of shit. The term godless was a, originally a pejorative intertwined with dismissing the approval of someone at a societal level uh, when what it technically means is someone who has abstained uh, knowingly abstained from conceding to any arguments uh, pertinent pertinent to the existence of the su of a supernatural dimension be that a supernatural location or be that any supernatural beings uh, this has all been addressed in philosophy's recent past. Uh, the problem of morals was ad addressed by the ancient Greeks. Um, that it, Stoicism emerged after Epicurus's riddle. If if God is um, willing to prevent evil, but not able to prevent evil, then he's impotent. Um, if he's able to prevent evil but not willing, uh, he's pathetic and male malevolent. Um, if he's both able and willing to prevent evil, then why the fuck do we live in a world of full of evil? Um, and if he's neither able nor willing to prevent evil and is just kicking back, um, then why the fuck should any of us call him God? And, you know, the Greeks stated that two millennia ago. Um, Nietzsche restated it and said our morals must uh, derive from our own willpower. Uh, people like Michael Shermer and Shelley Kagan have built on that and said, and Sam Harris, and have said that um, morality has to, you can even see like a could the Christians drew a diorama of it when they portrayed heaven and hell and said that, you know, you're, I mean, why would you want to go to heaven and avoid going to hell? It's all promissory on the idea that you'll be enjoying all the benefits of being in heaven uh, and having avoided and dodged all the perils and torments that would await those going to hell. So it's already recognized that morality reduces to the um, to the state of welfare of ex existential welfare of, for conscious creatures, and it's been argued that we can better return those principles while we're here on Earth now, rather than block it, block progress with this doctrine of final judgment. Um, yeah, contributing to the well-being and, and of, of conscious creatures, it's relative differentials and variables from person to person. Uh, and that which is considered bad is that which is diminishing, diminishing or destructive to the, to the flourishing, the aforementioned flourishing and well-being of conscious creatures. And, and so it's submitted that's what we mean by good and evil. We mean... Are you flourishing? Are you de are you deteriorating? And such is the scope of, of 
of good and bad. Uh, so the conclusion is, as I see it, is probably out of some kind of uh, caste-based culture-loving mentality that's um, looking for political opportunities to push religious agendas and I think that they deep down are envious perhaps of citizens that they isolate and pick on uh, and, and they want to regard it or make it regarded to be an illness or a sickness if you've considered philosophy beyond the time of Freud uh, if you've considered Sartre and Sartre's uh, regard of Heidegger, his dialogue in exchange with Simone de Beauvoir, the uh, the existential crisis. Yes, it's a very different culture of, of person. And these people want to party, celebrate life. Um, there should not be discrimination on the basis that uh, perhaps you believe in nothing or you're choosing to believe in nothing for the time being. Those options should be left to the individual, and I would con I would submit that they not be regarded as forms of sickness, especially not if there's not if complaints aren't being lodged, and you are aware of a person's passivity to address problems in life as they as they come. So you know, uh, it's it'll be ironic when contests get that bad and nihilists or those contemplatives of nihilist ideas and anarchist ideas and uh, societal detraction they're actually uh, those sort of mentalities are indemnified by the by the book of Ecclesiastes and that could be pointed out I suppose in court uh, you know you've you're asking everyone to touch a book that does indeed admit that we should um, disregard our teachers for the sake of building ourselves and and admit that everything is meaningless uh, and that nothing is new. All these roles that we're playing, this arguing that I'm doing, someone else has already done it before. There's, there's, there's nothing new about it, except that this is a world where if you had, if you had some contribution, the church would uh, enjoy your killing, and then perhaps decorate your skeleton two hundred years later with a, with a heresy or attraction. Like, a, so yeah, sorry, Galileo, we, uh, we admit it now. You seem to knew it. Now we've got satellites everywhere so uh and they've they've confirmed the measurements you made so you know uh galileo you died getting persecuted and called a heretic by the church and the greatest authorities of your time um so how fair how, how it advanced australia fair is is it the church um holding back a doctrine that does indeed state that life is inherently meaningless only to go on and, and declare and pronounce the meaning and value of other people um, on the basis of in judgment against their difference because you know better somehow because Jesus made some members of the Australian Federal Police roll around in the mud um, you know We've we've seen it all before. Ta ta. Uh, so the ones that I think uh, I would equate all concepts of justice with, like you know, wanting to write litigiously, and that's how how I would see it. Um. I've been thinking about, well, this, I don't devote much time to trying to estimate out these moves, which is, I mean, I obviously was uh, misled to, uh, I was unaware she had taken such an interest in 
uh, stick her nose into and yet not talk to me about what Jen she had with art that uh, as I saw it. What I think is absolutely horrible is when a person looked at it and I would dictate to you what, um, I mean, and only to take it or, or advise you go to psychiatry where they do use uh, the Rorschach effect, which is an, a, a blot of ink. And they go and they ask you, do you we, can you look at this blot of ink? What do you see? And... Um, How vulgar. So, yeah, so what's going on with, that, with Alan is that she's, I've seen her drive by disguised. I've seen her avoid uh, conversation follow up. And I've just talked about her back in church, um, back in church uh, saying, you know, uh, and then if she calls that the day she stopped to Gary Bradford. Uh, it's still the day she stood up to Gary Bradford about um, praying to Jesus in ways that Jesus himself taught not to. And therefore, you don't even have to... Um, you don't even have to... You can throw aside the uh, anything about the question of the sexuality of Jesus in his day. Um if 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 he's if he's her lord and he said don't pray to me in public groups, uh, and Alan is like, yeah, oh, and he died for you and died for you, Quick, let's all pray to him in public groups, like uh, t tears of a you'll be a you'll be a woman's woman soon. Uh, I wish I had <clears throat> I wish her the best, but yeah, I see the same the same the same um she wants to be on the run from um so yeah. She'll go, you know, what's why are you fan of corn? Uh amongst other things they're true to themselves. What about Manson? He worships the devil. No, he doesn't, and you should read his quotes online where he talks about what the Church of Satan regarded the worship to be about in in the mid to late 90s. Um, that now means you've lied on behalf of two bands. Is that because they have long hair in a way that makes you feel disappointed that you prayed to your Lord in a way that his, um, were against his wishes? And what sort of a Christian does that make you? One to lie about everyone else. Okay, well, don't you ask? Don't don't go. Um, now it's my turn. Now it's Alan and I's day to save the world. Um, like I said, it was contingent contingent on the question. Can art be enough for for, for uh, a friendship? Um, or are you going to complicate things and turn my life into a season of neighbors? Um, or Twin Peaks? Or whatever the fuck you're into. Because uh, if so, you can... Oh, oh we'll get fucked. Whoa, go get fucked. Whoa, shit. Fuck, whoa. Hi, so now, if the question is, the one's going up to Roger, who loves to find unilateral ways to state the sustainment of his dignity, pursuant to all in endeavours and involvements and projects, and if they were to approach him and say, well, you would, technically you're obstructing justice by keeping him here, you owe him, uh... Roger might turn back to them and say, well, if he, 
in this need to travel, he he only has to call and request a meeting. It's um, no, no, no. It's not going to be played that way, and the and that's simply because it indemnifies to other people's on looking uh, the prospect that the initial claims that Roger filed, the camera planting, and the initial journalistic efforts. Um, were done with my consent. Now, he might have done a dodgy deal with my the man who mum's mum's fourth wedding um, with that guy. Um, that's entirely possible. It fits with them sustaining the grounds by which they disliked me. Um, then wanting to match that with the prospect of me having employ been invited to employment at the Canberra Hospital, uh, while knowing that I hadn't, it, it no, well they would they would know it would have been a weight on my mind the the terms by which I left capital and it's like a it's like the feeling that you have if you were. R rural or in a campsite and you've got to watch out for reptil reptiles um, bit, you're, you're on alert but um, with no consent given by my person to Roger and then of course I'm invited by Elizabeth Breden's suggestion to go uh, whereas it could only have been Roger through liaising with management at the Capital Chemist Warehouse at the back of one of house's shops that he would have ascertained word that uh, I don't think in the most gentlemanly ways about Elizabeth Breton uh, and had taken phone on the phone orders for uh, for Capital Chemist Warehouse stock to go to Elizabeth Breton's shop at O'Connor um I'm not going to be a gossip, but she's not. She she wasn't exactly the poster girl of uh, of other capital chemist shops or the warehouse. But she invites me to go and to work at O'Connor. Not only invites me, but encourages you know this uh, employer brunette long hair. Would you like a lift home? Um, You know, watch watch them now. What the, what they weren't expecting was any sort of response, and uh, and now watch them watch them trying to tell you contradictory things. Uh, that my observations are to be dismissed as coincidental, but their profile uh, and all the predeterminist axioms that you're to just merely imagine independent of factual the factuality of events are however cogent and valid and merit your belief and your crediting um, watch him go indeed so no the uh, a liaise liaison between lawyers, lawyer to lawyer, and my lawyer talking to his lawyer. Well, there's not going to be me meeting Roger at all when Roger crosses me to film me. If I can do things like film him, film him fucking his partner and put the footage on YouTube. So I, I have to do stuff like that uh, in um, payback before I would consider a personal conversation.
right, so now, if the question is, the one's going up to Roger, who loves to find unilateral ways to state the sustainment of his dignity, pursuant to all in endeavors and involvements and projects. And if, if they were to approach him and say, well, you would, technically you're obstructing justice by keeping him here, you owe him. Uh, Roger might turn back to them and say, well, if he, the, in this need to travel, he, he only has to call and request a meeting. It's, um, no, no, no. It's not going to be played that way, and the and that's simply because it indemnifies to other people's onlooking uh, the prospect that the initial claims that Roger filed, the camera planting, and the initial journalistic efforts um, were done with my consent. Now, he might have done a dodgy deal with my the man who, mum's mum's fourth wedding, um, with that guy, um, that's entirely possible, it fits with them sustaining the grounds by which they disliked me, um, then wanting to match that with the prospect of me having employed, been invited to employment at the Canberra Hospital, uh, while knowing that I hadn't, it, it no, well they would they would know it would have been a weight on my mind the, the terms by which I left capital and it's like a. It's like the feeling that you have if you were. R rural or in a campsite and you've got to watch out for, reptil reptiles, um, a bit. You're you're on alert, but um. With no consent given by my person to Roger, and then of course I'm invited by Elizabeth Breden's suggestion to go. Uh, whereas it could only have been Roger through liaising with management at the Capital Chemist Warehouse at the back of Waniasa's shops that he would have ascertained word that uh, I don't think in the most gentlemanly ways about Elizabeth Breton uh, and had taken phone on the phone orders for uh, for Capital Chemist Warehouse stock to go to Elizabeth Breton's shop at O'Connor. Um, I'm not going to be a gossip, but she's not... She, she wasn't exactly the poster girl of... Uh, of other Capital Chemist shops or the warehouse, but... She invites me to go and to work at O'Connor. Not only invites me, but encourages, you know, this uh, employer, brunette, long hair. Would you like a lift home? Um, you know, watch, watch them now. What, the, what they weren't expecting was any sort of response. And... Uh, And now watch him, watch him trying to tell you contradictory things. Uh, that my observations are to be dismissed as coincidental, but their profile uh, and all the predeterminist axioms that you're to just merely imagine, independent of factual the factuality of events, are uh, however cogent and valid and merit your belief and your crediting. Um, Watch him go indeed. So, no, the, uh, a liaise, liaison between lawyers, lawyer to lawyer, and my lawyer talking to his lawyer. Well, there's not going to be me meeting Roger at all when Roger crosses me to film me. If I can do things like film him film him fucking his partner and put the footage on YouTube. So I, I have to do stuff like that uh, in um, payback before I would consider a personal conversation. <laughs>